हेलो हेलो गुड इवनिंग नमस्ते आई पूर्णिया जैन एम यू होस्ट फॉर टू नाइट एंड वेलकम टू प्राइम शो विद पूर्णिया वेर वी डिस्कस एंड डिबेट अबाउट थिंग्स एंड ट्राई टू ब्रॉड इन योर माइंड सेट सो दैट यू स्टैंड आउट फ्रॉम द क्राउड नाउ डिड यू नो दैट इंडिया इंट्रोड्यूस शैम्पू टू द वर्ल्ड और डिड यू नो दैट द अर्लीस्ट डायमंड इन द वर्ल्ड वॉज माइंड इन इंडिया येस आई एम टेलिंग यू द ट्रूथ Oh did you know that the first ever rocket launched from India I bet you didn't but worry not because today we are going to discuss India's incredible contribution towards making the modern world and believe me you're going to learn a lot of new and unknown facts about India Now without any further ado let us welcome our panelist for tonight First we have Ms Priya Rana who is a yogini as well as an ayurvedic practitioner Namaste Mr Harsh Bhrisht who is a professor at Delhi University and a renowned mathematician Hello everyone Mr Rishabh Sharma who is an agronomist A very good evening to all of you Ms Tanya Khanna who is a scientist and a former IT specialist A very good evening everyone Mr Kavya Gupta who is an economist as well as a member of a trade union Hello everyone good evening and last but not the least Mr Ashish David who is a famous industrialist and believe that India can do wonders if industries are given the chance to bloom Hello everyone it's a great privilege for me to be here Okay now let's move on to our discussion for tonight Miss Priya we all know how effective ayurveda is but the modern thinking is slowly and steadily creeping into these age old practices and now ayurveda is not considered to be proper for medical sciences what is your stand on this okay so basically uh, the indian health system recognizes seven traditional systems ayurveda yog swarikta sid yunani and homeopathy and naturopathy and out of all of them ayurveda is one of the best known in the world and it has spread to neighboring countries like nepal and sri lanka and it has also influenced a lot of south asian countries like tibet and thailand now our modern day pace of life is increasingly having a negative impact on our physical mental social well being and it is you know it is coming out on us in the form of a lot of symptoms like burnout stress anxiety loneliness you name it but ayurveda can help us addressing some of these issues to achieve health ayurveda not only looks at the physical and mental aspects but it also looks at the environmental spiritual and social aspects and also while looking at cases related to health ayurveda looks for non drug related approaches to help us heal for example changing our personal lifestyle dietary man- maintenance and exercises and social and environmental relationships and because ayurveda does not have any side effects on the body it is considered to be one of the fittest systems out there so there you have your answer well i couldn't agree more and thanks to you now the youth know how important ayurveda is mr harsh we know for a fact that india has had the greatest mathematicians in the world who knew that the earth was round even before galileo's scientific revelation but their works are less known to the world would you like to throw some highlight and highlight a few of them for us yes punya ancient india was a land of sages and seers as well as a land of scholars and scientists ancient india has strengthened and created the modern science and technology one of the ground breaking contribution given by the ancient india to the modern world is the idea of zero a little is to be written about the mathematical digit zero one of the greatest inventions of all time the digit zero was first discovered by aryabhat the invention of zero immensely simplified computations freeing mathematicians to develop vital mathematical disciplines such as algebra and calculus 
and eventually the basis of computer also thank you thank you mr harsh you have given us a more clear picture of how great indian mathematicians were mr sharma we know that agriculture has been the backbone of our country but we have seen a major major shift from primary sector to tertiary sector in the past few years and it has resulted in a declining economic contribution of agriculture to india's gdp would you like to throw some light on this matter yes purnia of course the history of agriculture in india dates back to indus valley civilization india ranks second worldwide in farm outputs as per 2018 agriculture employed 50% of the indian workforces and contributed 17 to 18% to the country's gdp according to the latest report agriculture employed more than 58% population in india uh, in 2016 agriculture and allied sectors like animal husbandry uh, fisheries and forestries accounted for 14% of the gdp with about 31% of the work forces in india in 2014 india ranks first with highest net crop area followed by us and china the economic contribution of agriculture to country's gdp is steadily declining but uh, but the country's broad based economic growth the the uh, still agriculture uh, still agriculture is demographically the broadest economic sector and plays a significant role in making in making the socio economic fabric of india india exported 38 billion worth of agricultural exports uh, in 2013 making it the seventh largest agricultural export and the sixth largest net exporter in the world its most of export is served to the developing and the least developed nations it's a primarily it's a primarily exported to the one, more than 120 countries primarily to the japan to the united states and to the european union thank you thank you mr sharma for informing us about such a concerning matter ms khanna india has always actively participated in the field of science and technology but there is a notion common notion among people that it has not done something remarkable so far do you agree as mr harsh said ancient india was a land of sages and seers as well as a land of scholars and scientists research has shown that from making the best till in the world to teaching the world how to count india was actively contributing in the field of science and technology one of the notable scientists of ancient india was kanad who is said to have devised the atomic theory centuries before john dalton was born if we talk about the smelting of metal the smelting of zinc was first done in india by distillation process an advanced technique derived from a long experience of ancient alchemy today india has given the cheapest satellite to the world mr vikram sarabhai uh, developed a, a, a indian space program which is today known as isro which is today making speed dating records in a specified field pv raman contributed in the field of physics by giving Raman effect to the world, whereas Sadi Mali contributed in the field of science by giving us mythology. That is why he is today known as Third Man of India. These were some of the glimpses of India's contribution in the field of science and technology. One should know. Thank you, Miss Khanna. And now you know, kids, that we are never to question the science and technology of our country, Mr. Kavya Gupta. Can you tell our audience how Indian trade and economy has contributed towards making the world modern? Yes, of course. So, hello. Do you all know the positive side of India? At economy and trade, the growth of manufacturing makes India one of the top three emerging economies. In the first year on year, Indian exports in seven months. Manufacturing growth reflected the highest reading in purchasing managers index in over eight years. India's merchandise exports rose six percent to US dollar twenty seven point six billion in September on a yearly basis. According to PwC report, India is gaining per merch as the whole sixth 
होल्ड वर्ल्ड सिक्स लार्जेस्ट ओ टी टी ओवर द टॉप स्ट्रीमिंग मार्केट बाई टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर द मार्केट इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू ग्रो एट सी ए जी आर ऑफ ट्वेंटी एट पॉइंट सिक्स परसेंट ओवर द नेक्स्ट फोर ईयर्स टू टच रेवेन्यूज ऑफ यूएस डॉलर टू पॉइंट नाइन बिलियन थैंक यू थैंक यू मिस्टर Mr Ashish everybody knows how colonial colonialism has impacted and exploited indian resources but i guess that you seem to have a different point of view would you like to share it with us yes absolutely i also believe that britishers have exploited india for a very very long time and they have earned a very great profit by using indian resources they were able to do this because they believe that The, these Indian resources are the best anyone can find throughout the world. But if we don't look at in a way that Britishers have exploited India, and look at in a way that how these resources have helped in making the world a modern place, we can find it very, very and very interesting. So, so there are many resources which helped in making the world a modern place. Some of them are Indian tea food. Indian indigo plantations and coal. First, tea port. Indian tea helped in making of large ships and railways, which was a great change for the society at that time. Which was a great change for the society at that time, as it saved a lot of energy and time of people who were doing trading and were traveling. So we can say that tea has also. a very important role in helping in making the world a modern place second indigo plantation india had the best and the brightest indigo and the brightest in blue in color indigo at that time and large industries were set up to make bright and good modern clothes from that indigo but indigo did not just bring a modernizing clothing in people but it also brought bright colors in people's lives so we can say that indigo has also an important role in modernizing the world third coal as mentioned by me earlier that large ships and railways were made so if a person is making these kinds of big transport system he will always think that how are they going to run so indian coal made their answer very very and very easy because uh, we can find coal anywhere in this uh, in in the world there is no question in that but in india coal was found in very uh, great quantity and it was of very good quality but the most important point is it was very cheap so it was very cheap to run railways so coal also has a very different kind of way in making a world a modern place and i also believe that india have many and many resources if we indians only use the right technology we can do wonders for the world to make world a modern place thank you well thank you mr ashish and i don't know about others but you've definitely changed my mindset and a big thanks to all our panelists tonight for their valuable time and And feedback. And now, are you ready? Because it's time for the viewers' question of the day. And today's question is: Do you think that respect for India and Indians has increased internationally? And can we now say and consider India as a leading power? Uh, we'll start with Miss Priya. Uh, as we all know that India is developing at a really fast rate. but still we can't call it a super power because india is famous for its religious riots but not in a good way religious riots will of course will not the, make the country peaceful and if the country is not peaceful how can it be a super power so i guess india still has a lot of time before it can be somewhere near being a natural power mr rishabh Uh, yes punya i think uh, india has started its journey to become a super power because in, uh, uh, we all, uh, all we have known the pandemic condition in this pandemic condition india proved itself and improved its resources 
and also uh, improve the its itself in all the fields like defense and health. So I think uh, India become a superpower in five or uh, in after some years. Okay, Mr. Ashish. I agree with Mr. Rishabh that India has started a, its journey to become a superpower because India comes on the 14th rank uh, of being the most powerful country in the world, which is very near to become a superpower. So I believe in five ten years we can say that we are living in a superpower country. And I also believe that India has gained a lot of respect throughout the world because. Indian scientists have done wonders for the world. Thank you. Ms. Tanya? Well, I have a different perspective. I believe that India is gaining respect internationally, but it is lacking in many fields which will lead it to become a superpower. Our respected PM Modi ji is making links with other countries, uh, visiting other countries, but India still has a very low literacy rate and it is still a developing country. So it has to go miles ago to become a superpower. Okay. Mr. Kavya, what do you have to say? I believe there is every reason for Indian citizens to be on a high. As Article 370 has been abrogated with ease and without international people. So I think India deserves to be a superpower country. Thank you. Wow, that was a good pointer. Well, after listening to all your points and views, I have concluded that we have definitely gained respect globally. And people from all over the world are now adopting our religion, our culture. They are celebrating our festival. But India still isn't ready to become a superpower because it still has a lot of ground issues to solve. And we are still in a developing phase. Once we reach a developed phase, maybe we can become a superpower. And as Mr. Ashi said, that I, I too can see India becoming a superpower in the coming future. And with that, we have come to the end of our show. I would like to thank our panelists once again for being on the tonight show. Thank you. Sadly, we have come to the end of our show. But we will be back next week, same time, same place. Till then, stay home, stay safe and jai.